What is up, you guys, and welcome back to my channel. Unfortunately, as you can tell, still not in my workspace. Me and FedEx were kind of having a little bit of a problem right now. I need some things delivered to help the sound quality in that space, so that's why I'm still here, but I promise one week we will make it there, eventually. Hopefully sooner rather than later. So today we're going to be speaking about the disappearance of Serenity Denard, and this is a very highly requested case. I had a ton of people uh, contact me right after this happened. This happened in 2019, beginning of 2019 in February, February 3rd to be specific. I think one of the largest reasons that a lot of you suggested this to me was because there's a lot of kind of controversial theories out there. There's people with very strong opinions. I'll just put it that way. So we'll get into that at the end of the video. But right now, before I get into this, I want to thank Kara for collaborating with me on this video and if you have ever listened to my podcast with John Crime After Crime you guys already know I am a huge fan of Care Of and this past year has been insane and so busy so I've really needed Care Of to help keep me on track with my health and wellness goals. Care Of is focused on science and research and the quality behind every single supplement that they recommend. They offer a quick quiz on their website to help gather the best supplements that will support you directly and your lifestyle. It's a really fun and easy process. It only takes a couple of minutes and you get to explain your health goals, your diet, any concerns you may have like lack of sleep, lack of energy, brain fog, things that I may or may not struggle with on a daily basis, as well as the amount of physical activity that you participate in. And by the end of this quiz, you are handed a perfectly curated list of supplements to choose from. You create a tailored daily package of vitamins and supplements. Each supplement also has a great description along with it. So you know exactly where these supplements are coming from and exactly how they're going to benefit you and your lifestyle. I personally have always worked very hard to take care of my body inside and out, and I go to the gym a lot, so I absolutely love their protein powders. It's very important to me as well because as you can see, I get plant protein. That's a huge thing for me. And also I have this right now because I'm doing a lot of workouts from home, but I typically use their little packets that you can get because they're great for on the go. It's like a single serving packet. I swear I live by those when I go into the gym. I also love that this is really easy to take with you as well. Right now I am training at a gym two times a week, so I'm able to grab this. It's also cute because it has my name on it. And this contains all of the different vitamins and supplements that I picked. I have magnesium, which helps for my sore muscles. I also have a fish oil that's not containing any shellfish. And for anyone with a shellfish allergy, you know that's a huge deal. And as well as a probiotic blend that I use for immune support. With fall and winter coming, health should absolutely be a top priority. And if you weren't aware, it actually takes 30 days for your body to adapt to new nutrients that you are feeding it. So now is the perfect time to start. Head on over to the Care of website that I have linked in the description down below. You can go ahead and take the quiz and find out what supplements are recommended for you. And then use code Danielle50 at checkout for 50% off off your first month with Care Of. Thank you again to Care Of, and now on to the video. So Serenity Denard was only nine years old when she went missing on Sunday, February 3rd, 2019, from the Black Hills Children's Home in Rockerville, South Dakota. Serenity was given up for adoption by her biological parents pretty quickly after birth. And for the next four years of her life, she was tossed around from foster home to foster home over a dozen. I mean, one family after the next in some of the most critical years of her life. And finally, by the age of four, she found what would be her forever home. She was adopted by Chad and Darcy Denard, and they were so excited to bring this little girl into their home. And Serenity did not let them down. This girl is full of personality. She is full of energy. She was always so playful. They said that when she would go out and kind of play with friends in the neighborhood, she would always come back with like five or six of them because she just always wanted to continue playing. She was a happy little girl. Unfortunately, Darcy and Chad did end up divorced and they both remarried and I believe that she ended up gaining three siblings total through Chad's new marriage with a woman named Cassandra. It's also my understanding that Serenity lived most of the time with her father. Um, I'm not sure how often she lived with her mother, but uh, from the way it was stated, it said that when she went missing and when she was put into the Black Hill Hills Child Facility that she was living with her father. But on top of her four year period where she was just bounced around family to family, you know, after that she 
you know, had to deal with a divorce of her parents and deal with a new stepmom, a new stepdad, and then all these other siblings. She struggled with mental health disorders as well, thanks to her upbringing in the foster system. And unfortunately, that's really not all too surprising. Serenity was diagnosed with something called reactive attachment disorder. And I've actually spoken about this in another case where there was a child that had gone through um, abuse. And in a nutshell, this disorder means that this person struggles with making any sort of emotional connection with a caregiver. And it's not always stemming from abuse. Abuse and neglect can definitely cause it. But in Serenity's case, it had more to do with the fact that she never had one stable caregiver. She was abruptly taken from someone that she was starting to trust and put into the hands of another person. And then she probably started to trust them and then was put in the hands of another person. And unfortunately, what science has said is that this typically happens when children go through these sorts of things between the ages of six months and three years. So quite literally, the entirety of when she was in the foster system. This disorder can cause children to act out because they lack a lot of trust. They, again, don't quite understand emotions as normal people would and, you know, normal attachments toward parents or siblings and sometimes even other children. I know that Serenity's parents said that she would have days where she would wake up and just be so in love with them and want to kiss them and hug them and be with them and tell them they're the best parents. But then the next day, for some reason, nothing would have happened and she would wake up up and she would all of a sudden tell them that she hated them and that they weren't her real parents so she didn't care and all these other things. It's just heartbreaking because it's nothing necessarily that that current environment was doing to her. It was just the fact that she was brought up not being able to have one person to trust and look up to, one person that took care of her, you know, constantly gave her everything that she needed. Because of this, everyone was kind of kept at a distance, I believe, to protect her heart and protect her mind. That was just how her brain learned to protect her. Serenity was also diagnosed with disruptive mood dysregulation disorder, which also leads to drastic mood swings. PMDD causes extreme irritability, extreme anxiety, anger, um, temper outburst. It's just kind of like a child spends the entire day just being moody, but like way past that. It can cause a lot of anger and aggression. And this disorder is also known because of this to cause a lot of issues within the family. They tend to have a lot of problems in school. They have a lot of problems with keeping friends because they're just so upset all the time and it makes it very difficult for people to want to be around them and to handle that sort of situation so it's really hard and on top of that it's also been documented that children struggling with this disorder end up in the hospital and in some sort of healthcare or mental facility way more frequently than a lot of other individuals. And typically it's from a total inability to calm down, just the state of rage that they cannot get rid of. So they're typically taken to the hospital or taken somewhere to be sedated or just given medication to calm them down. And unfortunately, while her parents seemed to do everything they could and she was constantly in healthcare um, and psychiatric care so that they were able to manage these disorders as best as they could. The really unfortunate thing about these two disorders is that there's not really a lot you can do about it. There's like behavioral therapies that you can use for both of them. I know that with the DMDD in particular, um, there's a lot of actually controversial information going around about it, about you know how to treat it and if you can't even treat it. I know for a fact there is no medication that can help with DMDD. I don't know if she was taking any medication at all otherwise for this, um, but it was just, it was difficult. And her parents, from what I'm seeing, were doing everything they could, making sure that she had health care to make sure they could keep her as happy and content as possible. But unfortunately, nothing seemed to be helping the way that they had hoped. Serenity ended up developing this pattern of running away. According to her father, it was something that occurred frequently and he even described her as being a professional and like a mastermind at it because she would sit and she would plan and then she would execute like a perfectly thought out escape. She could escape from anywhere, anytime. And what makes me so heartbroken is that her father said that it seemed like she did it because she liked to watch people search for her. And thinking about her disorders, this likely means that she she wanted to see that people cared and she wanted to see lots of people, you know, searching for her and looking for her and, you know, 
thinking that she's important. So because of this, she never really went far. He said that she never ever like left and like refused to come back. She eventually would basically allow herself to be found. Um, it was just, I guess, this rush that she got from running away and seeing people care enough about her to follow her and try to find her. At some time in 2018, and I've not been able to find an exact date, right before she was put into the Black Hills Children Facility, things with her disorders and her behavioral issues got a lot worse. Her behavior worsened drastically. She was running away more frequently. There were a lot of issues, and I think just fear over the potential for self-harm. She was not doing well. Her mental health was declining rapidly. So they needed to figure out some other sort of situation to help Serenity. And this is when they were referred to Black Hills Children Facility. This facility offers aid to not just children, but also families that are struggling overall with emotional and behavioral issues. They deal a lot with trauma. Uh, they do create a safe haven for children that need immediate care to be taken immediately from a family. They offer, from what I'm seeing, like group sessions between the family and a child. There are day programs that you can drop your children off at. There are also residential programs where your child sits at, where your child stays at the facility. They make it as homey and comfortable as possible and then they work on activities all throughout the day to just work on managing their emotions, dealing with their disorders, work on life skills, you know, skills to use when you're struggling with your disorder and you're out in public or you're at school or when you're at home with your family. So sometime at the end of 2018, Serenity was in fact put into this facility because her parents thought this was something that could help her. It was constant therapy, um, you know, constantly working on dealing with the different situations that were causing her so many issues. And because she had just so recently ran away, I think even up to a week before she uh, was put into this facility, they had her at a strict arm's length monitoring system. So she could not ever be alone. Um, she had to be with someone and watched by someone at all times because there was such a huge risk that she would run. Not sure how things really went other than that in this residential treatment. I don't know how often she spoke to her parents. I don't know if there were like scheduled visits on the weekends, but I know that in February, something very clearly went wrong. The morning of February 3rd, 2019, it was around 10.45 in the morning and Serenity, six other children, and then two staff members were in the gym. I believe that this was common for her. I don't know if she was kept in a smaller group because she was at this arm's length monitoring, but the day before this, February the 2nd, she was taken off of the monitoring for some unknown reason. I've seen that quite literally nobody can explain why they stopped monitoring her closely as a flight risk. Now, being Serenity, the second she realized she was not on this close monitoring, she took the chance that she had been handed. She conspired while in the gym with another child that she was there with that this other child was going to distract the staff members, the two that were watching over the seven total children, so that Serenity could run away. Now, I am not exactly sure how this child distracted the staff. From what I'm piecing together, it seems like this other child ran out of the gym into the main building, so one of the staff members had to follow suit. Um, but I've only seen that on one source, so I don't wanna say that's an absolute fact. Um, but basically, there was a distraction, and Serenity took off out of the gym outside of the facility. Now, both staff members witnessed this and apparently did not immediately go after Serenity. I mean, it had to have been a couple of minutes before they even went after her. Serenity left the gym. She was now outside. She took off running down the main pathway through the campus. She went through the main parking lot on the north side of the campus and then went out that main exit and started to head north on South Rockerville Road. But she was spotted during all of this. And this is how we even know any of this information. A grandmother and a granddaughter were dropping a child off at the facility, likely for a day program or something. I don't know why they were there, but they were there and they were pulling in as Serenity was running out. Now, given the facility that they were at, it was pretty safe to assume that seeing a child run from it probably didn't mean anything good. So the grandmother told the granddaughter to stay in the car, watch Serenity, and the grandmother went inside to alert a staff member. Now, this is where the disaster just keeps unfolding. So when the grandmother went to alert a staff member, the staff member pulled out their radio, which was for emergency communication to alert the other staff members. But 
the other staff members were all on different channels. So most of the staff did not even get this message. Meanwhile, while they're trying to wrangle up people to figure out what to do about Serenity, the granddaughter is still sitting in the car. And at this point, Serenity is just walking along the road. So it's kind of adding up to what she would typically do, where she probably ran to get people to want to chase her. And then once she got far away, she walked because I think if she was running to run, like get out of there, don't want to be here anymore, she would have kept on running. But since she slowed to a walk, I genuinely think she was just trying to stay close to watch people search for her. Like her dad said, she she typically would. But after walking about 50 yards down this road, the granddaughter ended up losing sight of Serenity. She didn't like go into the woods or anything like that. She just kind of went around a curve. There is a curve that's right there. I'll show it on a map and she lost sight of her because of the trees. At this point, it's been about three to five minutes since Serenity took off and the grandmother is back at the car. The facility is still getting themselves together. No one has still chased after her at all at this point. Um, even the two individuals that had been watching her. So the grandmother and granddaughter decided to go follow where Serenity went. After all, she could not have gone that far. I mean, I know kids can move fast, but at that point she had been walking casually. So they figured if she was still on this road, they could easily find her. Drove the four miles up to Rockerville, didn't see her, which is the direction she had been heading. And from what I'm seeing, there's like areas where the forest is a little bit more dense, but it's not that dense. So I feel like if she had been in the woods hiding or something, you might have been able to see her. And if she enjoyed watching people look for her, I mean, I feel like she would have been close enough to the road to see that. But they drove up to Rockerville, didn't see her, drove back down. And I think they went all the way down to Keystone, which is the opposite direction, three miles past the facility. And there was absolutely no sign of serenity. Like it had only been five minutes and she had somehow totally vanished along this road. So again, back to the five minute mark, this is finally when the facility started to search for Serenity. I think four staff members came together and they decided to go ahead and search around the grounds. Now, I have absolutely no idea why these individuals searched inside of the buildings when there were two, possibly three eyewitnesses, I'm not sure if the child saw anything, saying that she had completely left the property, but for some reason, that's exactly what they did. Didn't call 911, they didn't go the direction that Serenity had gone, they stayed on the campus and searched like under beds and in closets and rooms and things like that. On-call supervisor was called at this point and they advised the staff members to search for another 15 minutes and then after that 15 minutes, then they should call 911. But that isn't at all what happened. Around 12.26 p.m., the on-call supervisor arrived. This is 80 minutes later. And when the supervisor arrived, nobody had called 911 still. It was over an hour and a half later, like approaching two hours quickly since Serenity ran, and not a single person at this facility called 911 not a single person. And at this point, there's five staff members that are searching for her and probably all of the other staff that's very aware at this point. And not a single person was like, hey, maybe I should call 911 because this child known for running away, ran away and ran away off into a main road totally out of this facility. The supervisor at this point called 911 themselves and at around 12.56 p.m. that day, police arrived and they were taking in information. Deputies ended up arriving at around 1.16 p.m. and they realized the dangerous, terrifying position that they were in. Black Hills Children Facility, and I haven't described this yet, it's pretty much in the middle of nowhere, at least what I would describe as the middle of nowhere. It's only 10 miles away from Mount Rushmore. It's on a very solitary road. Um, there's cliffs, there's rushing streams, there's trails that branch off of this road. I don't think any real roads actually branch off of it. They're like dirt roads that I think maybe access roads for the forest or something like that, but there's no like real roads that really go off of the main road she was on. 
South Rockerville Road. And so this was scary because it was the middle of winter in South Dakota and there were so many ways in which she could have fallen and gotten hurt, been trapped in a stream, trying to cross it. There are animals to add into the equation. So this was an emergency and they immediately called for backup search and rescue and about 35 different individuals showed up to help. At this point, both of Serenity's parents had been called by the facility and also spoke to authorities and authorities instructed them to stay at their houses. So Darcy stayed in her house with her husband and, um, and Chad stayed in his house with his wife and they were supposed to stay there in case that's where Serenity was heading. She was trying to get home because that was a huge possibility. By 4.57 p.m., authorities decided to alert the media so that they could hopefully spread information about Serenity's disappearance and bring someone forward that may have seen her somewhere. After all, this is a nine-year-old on foot. Hopefully someone saw something. They also decided to go door to door and speak to different people in the community nearby that she may have passed in hopes that someone saw Serenity, uh, maybe check their property because it was lots of large land, farmhouses nearby, um, and I think they went to 40 houses in total, hoping that someone saw signs that Serenity was trying to go there for warmth or maybe knocked on a door for help, but unfortunately, it didn't lead them to any sort of answer. The search and rescue team brought dogs and they traveled in grid patterns all throughout the area that entire night, but around 10.30 p.m., they had to go ahead and call off the search. It was too cold, it was too dark, and unfortunately, there was a snowstorm that was moving in, which is just like, I can't imagine how that must have felt for authorities and especially Serenity's parents, that she's out there somewhere in the woods and there's a big snowstorm on the way and nobody's able to keep searching. Serenity obviously did not leave and run away prepared for extreme cold or to be out for long, which also genuinely makes me believe that she was just trying to see who would chase her and who she could mess with that day. She only had a light gray long sleeve shirt on with flowers on it, jeans, and a pair of black snow boots. So she didn't even have a jacket and the temperatures reached five degrees that night. Over the next few days, over 200 people showed up to search for Serenity. This is one of the largest searches that have ever happened in all of South Dakota history. But unfortunately, they were not coming up with anything. So by February the 6th, a few days after her disappearance, they decided to ask for help from special cadaver dog teams from Iowa, Colorado, and Wyoming. Thermal cameras were also brought in pretty much right away, which I honestly, I don't know, it just makes me question so many things because if she had been out there, I feel like they would have found her with these thermal cameras. There was an aerial search done, I believe, with the thermal cameras. So you would just expect to see something, but it just didn't turn out that way. Because of Serenity's history of not really running far and allowing herself to be found, I'm pretty sure everyone probably believed this will be resolved quickly. You know, if she has a history of just, you know, wanting to watch people come and look for her, I'm sure that someone's gonna end up finding her. She can't possibly be that far. I'm pretty sure they even spoke to a pediatrician about someone her age and size, and they said that she probably only made it about three to four miles away, and they searched that entire area, and I'm telling you, just nothing. And so this really was scary because this wasn't lining up with any of the other times that she'd run away so far. So while authorities are, you know, making sure they're searching and looking for her, they also decided to investigate further to be safe. They didn't want to put all their eggs in one basket and they wanted to rule out that there was any sort of foul play involved. So because there were multiple witnesses seeing Serenity running away from this facility down Rockerville Road, they thought about the idea that maybe she was picked up by someone, but they pretty quickly ruled this out. This road was only used by locals during the winter. Summertime, maybe it would be used by other people just coming through, maybe to go to the monument. On top of that, the granddaughter and grandmother didn't see a single car pass. They when they came in, didn't see anyone. When Serenity left, nobody passed by. When they were out driving looking for her afterwards, there were no cars. So this just made it not very likely because at a car been coming the opposite direction, um, you know, heading towards Serenity's back, they were heading north just like she was, they would have had to pass by the facility. The car been heading south, head on towards Serenity. They would have had to have in that circumstance, pick her up and then turn around and head back 
north. So the opposite direction of how they were originally heading. And that really wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. There's also, like I said, not really many side roads that anyone could have come in on randomly um, or escaped on randomly. It was all like dirt access roads and trails. So the fact that no other car was seen, and it would have to be basically the craziest coincidence that someone with nefarious intentions was coming down the road at the exact same time she was there when no one ever traveled this road. It was just seeming like a stretch. So authorities then decided to look toward the facility itself. They interviewed all the staff that were working there. I think they even brought back people that may have ended their time working there during Serenity's stay. Um, they really questioned all the people that had any sort of contact with her on a daily basis. I believe they also spoke to a few children um, at the facility and this also led them pretty much absolutely nowhere other than to the fact that this facility had basically no proper procedures in place and did things all willy-nilly. We already know that they didn't have their emergency radios on the same channel, which entirely defeats the purpose of them. They also had no security cameras at all, just in case there was a situation like this. And when you are running a facility where you have troubled children that are struggling with all sorts of things, and they've even admitted themselves that a big issue they have is kids trying to run away. I feel like you should already kind of put two and two together and put up security cameras, but they didn't have them. And they also had no set protocol for runaways. Again, after stating that that was a common problem that they had. So that typically, you know, the kids that did run away would just run to another room. So they would usually just go and search the rooms until they found the child. But there was nothing else in place for these serious emergency situations. Because of this, an entire investigation was launched by the Department of Homeland Security and a few other agencies. I'm pretty sure like the FBI was on this facility. The two staff members that were supposed to be watching Serenity and that did not immediately try to get her back into the building. Both of them were fired at the recommendation of one of those agencies and also the whole entire facility was just under fire in general from the public nationally people were pissed obviously things happen people get away accidents happen unexpected things happen and when you have protocols in place and preventative measures going that's one thing because yeah Sometimes things happen that are beyond your control. But in my opinion, when something like this happens and there are dozens of ways that federal agencies can point out how you should have had something in place for that already. I mean, something as minimum as cameras or, you know, runaway protocol. That's something else entirely. So then they looked into the idea of, you know, lack of security here. Maybe there was a way that Serenity could have been in contact with someone outside of the facility to arrange this whole entire thing. We knew, we know that she made all these plans. She was a mastermind of escaping. Maybe she got in contact with someone who could come and pick her up. She waited for the exact time moment, ran, and then went to meet them. And that would explain why she seemed to just vanish out of nowhere and, you know, nothing was picked up on thermal cameras, nothing was seen in the searches. But when authorities looked into this, they found that there was absolutely no way that this could have happened. She could not have communicated with anyone outside of the facility. As of today, there have been 65 different agencies that have been involved for the search for Serenity. There have been dozens of dog teams, over 5,000 miles have been grid searched. I have a map of the GPS um, trails that everyone that searched, you know, went through and you barely can see any space that they did not touch. And they explained that the big gaps are mountains and things that she would not have been able to climb. So there was no reason to search it and it would have been a danger to them. There have also been over 1,200 separate searches that have been conducted. Pretty much everyone has lended a helping hand. The local fire department has searched endlessly. The lead investigator has searched endlessly. They've, they even, the air, individuals from the air base, individuals from the air force base nearby, they even came and dedicated a lot of their time to help out. Dozens and dozens of people were in these woods at all times. And from what I'm seeing, every single thing was strictly planned. Every single person had a GPS. There were tons of dogs offering help. There's been no stone unturned whatsoever. And there have even been local restaurants that are helping these different searchers. Um, their whole dining rooms have basically been cleared out. They allow all these searchers in after a long, cold, taxing day and they've given them a free meal. So it's not like this has been a half-ass search effort looking for serenity. This has been 
huge, like a massive, massive planned out, perfectly executed operation. The FBI has even been involved in this case to help check out leads because there have been a lot of different tips that have come in, mostly sightings, and it has taken the FBI and the investigating authorities to over 36 separate states, as well as four different countries. And they've chased down every single lead, 224 was the last number that I saw, and every single one of them has been ruled out. But what there has been is a lot of speculation from the community. Now, authorities have stated that their largest theory that they have, and they are awesome, honestly, they're not, again, putting all their eggs in one basket, so they're searching and they're also investigating and they're not saying no or yes to anything, um, but their largest theory and the thing that they think is mainly possible is that she ran off and she ended up getting lost and ended up with hypothermia, froze to death, something along those lines. Because even authorities themselves are dumbfounded that they have not found her because a nine-year-old can get far, but she can only get so far, especially being so cold um, and the level of searching that they have done. They just find it so strange. They haven't found anything, no clothes, no nothing. They're thinking maybe hypothermia set in. She tried to warm her body up. Um, you know, they're thinking, first of all, usually people will take their clothes off when that happens. So they were hoping in that case they would find her clothes, but they haven't found them. But maybe she just was one of the cases where she kept them on and she crawled into some sort of hole. They're thinking that could be she could be in a cave. She could be underneath a rock cliff. She could have crawled in a hole in the trunk of a tree or a root ball or just somewhere where she could, you know, huddle in, curl up in a ball, try to get warm and survive through the night. And unfortunately, because of the temperatures, because of the snow, it's not super likely that that happened. But there are still many people that speculate that she was in fact picked up along the road. I've seen a lot of people um, talk about the 411 cases in regards to this. I've also seen people say that there had to have been a way she was able to contact people to pick her up. Um, there's just a lot of people online that I feel like only I've looked into half of the story or bits and pieces of it. And I understand where they're coming up with these theories because this is all things authorities have thought of. This was, you know, all things that I thought of while initially going through this, but you know, really sitting down and thinking about it, I just don't think any of those are really possible. There are people, however, that believe that this could have been an inside job when it comes to the facility. And even Darcy, Serenity's mom, has stated that she's thought about this on numerous occasions. The people that theorize this have said that they believe the facility, unfortunately, like a lot of youth facilities, could have been involved in some sort of criminal behavior. Unfortunately, and especially right now, we've heard about these different youth programs and treatment centers that have trafficked children, that have caused sexual abuse and mental abuse to children. So I can understand where people are coming from with this. Um, the theory basically states that she never actually ran away and that someone at the facility did something to her, sold her into trafficking or whatever. But the only issue I have with this is that there's too many people involved for this to go as fluidly as it's being thought. If you think about it, she ran in front of six other children. There were two staff members involved. All of them would have to tell the exact same story perfectly and never stray from it. On top of that, you have um, the random family that just so happened to see her run away and you have to get them in cahoots on it. It would all have to be kind of like a big elaborate plan involving a ton of different people, which makes it a lot less likely in my opinion. Now there's also an idea and theory that her family is involved. And this tends to be the thing that I've seen the most online and in the Facebook group. There are tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of accusations against her adoptive parents and her step parents. A ton of people in particular have shamed them for putting her in this facility. And I'm gonna be very frank with you. I think that's ridiculous. <laughs> it's frightening to me to see some of the things that these individuals are saying. Um, you know, as if parents, as if her parents kind of gave up on her and dumped her off at this facility because they couldn't handle her mental health. And there, there's nothing to that except speculation, like nothing at all. And in my opinion, this is a stigma that could 
fully endanger another child. That sort of mindset, assuming that everyone that takes their child to a facility because they need mental health care and therapy, the idea that that parent is then dumping their child off or an unfit parent, that could push a lot of parents to not seek help for their child when that is their sole job to get their child the help that they need. You can't shame parents and claim that parents are unfit or bad or abusive or neglectful simply because they put their child in a facility for help. With the disorders that Serenity had, it's a very, very common that outside therapies are necessary. Um, rehabilitation will be needed. It even states with her DMDD that they tend to spend a lot of times in hospitals or some sort of healthcare because they need such serious help with their disorder. And honestly, as someone who has been raised in a family where there have been disabilities, I've struggled with mental health myself. My family owned a business that for those that were mentally and physically disabled and handicapped, like I can't imagine looking at every single parent that I ever met that had their child in one of these day centers that my family ran or the live-in care that was provided. I could never imagine looking at that parent and saying, just because you did that, clearly you are an abusive, terrible parent that is trying to wash your hands of this individual. It's just like mind boggling to me. Some situations, professionals are so needed and so appreciated and so beneficial to those that need them. What I am seeing, Serenity was constantly in the care of someone, therapy seemed to be ongoing and she simply needed help. These disorders are not from her parents currently neglecting her. These disorders, if you go and look them up, do a quick, quick read on them, they directly stem from her foster care experience. They quite literally state it in so many of the studies that foster care can do this to a child. There are other claims that Chad and Cassandra had a new baby and that because of that, clearly they dumped Serenity off and you know wanted to get rid of her. But what I wanna point out is that they had three other kids. It's been years. People have also torn apart Chad and Darcy's divorce as well. But again, that was also years prior. And while it seems based on when people are saying that it was messy, I honestly still don't understand how that could have anything to do with her disappearance. Um, I could maybe see people thinking based on the fact that, you know, there was a divorce and it seems that Chad had a lot of the custody that Darcy maybe wanted to take her back. It just makes me feel kind of gross because I feel like people are seeing Serenity's disorders and using them to create their own scenarios and answers instead of seeing the disorders for what they are, which is very, very important. And then realizing that it has a lot to do with the neglectful foster care system, but I guess this is just one of those situations where it's a lot easier to blame the people that are tangible that you can get to than it is to take on an entire foster care system. Authorities have stated blatantly numerous times, as well as a lot of the search groups that both the parents have been interviewed, both Chad and Darcy, both of the new step parents have been interviewed. They even tracked down her biological parents and interviewed them as well, just in case they randomly decided they wanted to take their child back one day, which already was a stretch because again, crazy coincidence to just pull up when she's running away. Um, but they've stated that none of them are persons of interest or suspects at this time. The family has had to delete social media, which to me is unfortunate because that is a huge tool that they could be using to find their daughter because of the relentless attacks that a lot of people on social media are aiming at them. Uh, people have said some just really outlandish things, you guys. People have said that they clearly don't feel bad or care about Serenity because I think Cassandra posted an exclamation point on one of her posts about Serenity, um, which is ridiculous to me. There have also been people that have like stalked this family, taken pictures of their kids, found pictures of their kids and like posted them for public speculation. Um, because I guess Chad was in the military and first of all, everyone based off a stereotype and really stretching has stated that he should get psychologically evaluated because that might have to do, you know, with Serenity's disappearance. The fact that he was in the military, um, and they've also, are, and they're using these pictures to try to like prove that the other children are abused as well. So to think about this theory logically, that the parents are somehow involved. First of all, Darcy, if she had any want to get her child back since she, I guess, didn't have as much custody as people think she would like, 
I'm pretty sure that she wouldn't have been at work that day, but she had an alibi. She was fine. I'm assuming her husband had an alibi because authorities have said there's, you know, no concern with him either. Um, also on top of that, how, if there was a lack of communication, would her parents have known just when to go and drive by, but not actually drive by so anyone saw them right at the exact moment that she was running out and running away? There's a lot of speculation that her father gave her a cell phone to communicate with him so that he could help her escape. But again, so many issues with this. First of all, there was no evidence of this that found by authorities. They were actually able to fully rule out she was communicating with anyone. And on top of that, he's her parent. <laughs> if he wants to take his minor child out of this facility, he can do that. And he put her in there. So I'm not understanding the thought process of why all of a sudden he'd want to break her out as if he can't just go and get her if he wanted to. And when it comes to family members like harboring her for one reason or another, again, I don't think that's a huge possibility because if authorities took the time to go and question her biological parents that probably hadn't seen her, her whole entire life, then I'm pretty sure they probably checked family members to see if they were hiding serenity. Other than that, cadaver dogs have in fact picked up a scent a handful of times, but because of the way this area is, there is a lot of wind whipping around um, you know, caves and small mountain ranges. And because of that, the air kind of circulates. It's very windy. So it basically just sends the dogs going in circles. They can pick up a scent, but they can't necessarily like track it directly to where the scent's coming from. Obviously they can't say for sure if this scent picked up by dogs is Serenity. Um, they have stated it could be somebody else, but just because of the fact that she was in that area, there is obviously a chance that it's her. The Black Hills Children's Facility has allegedly changed a lot of their procedures at that specific location. I've seen that they are just like not doing anything with their other location they have. Um, but I guess now they're supposed to use one main channel on all of their radios in case of emergencies. They have to have alarms on the doors. Um, I know that there's some sort of delayed door opening that they've installed. They need to keep it safe so people can escape if they need to, but I think it's just like a delay. Like you can't get out for 15 seconds or something. There's an alarm that sounds if you do leave unexpectedly so that people actually know someone's running away. They also have to take a lot more training and get a lot of different certifications prior to being hired. And there also has to be a runaway protocol in place. I've also seen that they're supposed to make plans to have security cameras up, but from what I've seen, the latest article I've seen, they've yet to do that. So I guess they're taking steps in the right direction, but I also find it kind of crazy that they didn't have a lot of that stuff already in place. Serenity's family is also pushing for Serenity's Law, which is a middle ground, I guess you could say, between the Amber Alert and the National Endangered Missing Child Alert, which is what they put out for her. There is currently a petition linked down below that people are signing to try to get the Serenity Law into effect. From my understanding, it would send out alerts to phones, everyone around in the community where a child has gone missing. I don't know if it is a national thing per se. I think they're just trying to do it locally for now. And hopefully it would bring children like Serenity home faster because she, they don't think she was abducted. There's no proof she was abducted. So they couldn't put out an Amber Alert, but there's so much unknowns about her disappearance that it could be a possibility. But there also needs to be something a little more urgent, kind of like an Amber Alert for those where you're not quite sure what happened, but there's clearly a serious imminent danger, like running away into a dangerous area, um, dangerous terrain like she did, you know, people who maybe run away like bonsai with like these medical conditions require medication, um, things like that. I do encourage you guys to follow the Facebook pages. Be careful again, navigating some of the comments. We're all entitled to our opinions of what we think happened. I agree with that, uh, but again, use critical thinking, be smart, try not to harm anyone, including family in the process. They do post a lot of great information there, all the new articles that are written up, they immediately post them, they're doing an awesome job. I think it's two individuals that run it just because they care, which I always wanna support. They also have t-shirts and sweatshirts on there that you can buy, and all of that goes to a reward. They also are using the money for different methods of spreading awareness. I think they were trying to wrap a truck with all all of her pictures and missing person information. They also post when the family is hosting some sort of event. I know the most recent one I think they did was a Frozen event because Frozen was her favorite movie. Um, she loved Frozen, she had a microphone, she would sing into it all the different songs and everyone wore purple, which was her favorite color. 
They sold food, they had a silent auction, all these different things to raise money. It's just so freaking sad because it's like one thing after another for this poor girl, like her whole life, she's just thrown around from family to family. And then it's like, once she finds a stable home, the damage had already been done, you guys. And this is why like, I, I love and hate the foster system because it's so important. So that there is this sense of home for a child. So they're not sitting in something like an orphanage, you know, where they're under the state care, probably have no relationship built with any sort of adult. So I appreciate what it does. I just think it, the system is very flawed and having these kids jump from family to family, this is what it can do to them. And it just makes me so sad that all that damage had already been done. I mean, right in time for her to go to a family that loved her and wanted to take care of her. But unfortunately, you know, bad things ended up happening and these disorders wreaked havoc on her. But that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so, so much for taking the time out of your day to listen to Serenity's story. I'm pretty sure if she is out there somewhere, she will love the fact that, you know, this many people are caring about her and loving on her. So please leave something sweet in the comments down below. And on that note, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and go. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button to become a part of the Hallen fam. So hopefully we can bring them home together and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.